Lewis, welcome back to Storytime with YDRC. Today, I'm going to be reading Claw, the Evil Alien Warlord Cat Enemies, the second book in the series. This is part three of this series, so let's get started. Chapter 17. Just when I thought life couldn't get any better, kittens, three of them. I could not believe how cute they were. All weekend long, I played with them down in the basement. Stop it with your cursed affection, Claude said. You are going to turn them into soft earth cats with all this petting. The two gray ones, maybe, but the calico, she was like some sort of demon. I was a little afraid of her. My shins and arms already looked like scratching posts. I didn't still quite understand how Claude had managed to adopt them. And why did he want three kittens anyway? Er, um, well, he said, it is because of that lonely thing you were talking about. Yes, I am lonely. I was pretty sure Claude was lying, but I didn't care because again, kittens. Plus, I hadn't been exactly 100% truthful myself lately. Kids at school kept wanting to know more about my America Man connection, and I sort of started exaggerating that too. Like how I used to watch Mrs. Adams draw stuff, which was true, and how I would suggest plots to her, also true, and how she would take my suggestions, not true. She always said she was going to use my ideas, but she never did. I also kind of implied that Cam and I texted every day and that I might be featured in the next American Man book. It wasn't like I meant to lie. It just sort of happened. Like I sort of happened not to mention the kittens to my parents. But knowing I wasn't being totally honest with everyone made me feel guilty. And like somehow, I was going to get caught. So on Monday, when Brody said there was a new kid at school from New York City, I felt a stab of panic. Hey, Raj, maybe you'll know him, Max said. And then I realized how ridiculous it was to worry. I laughed. There are like nine million people in New York. There's no way I'm going to know him. I was just sitting down at my work table next to Cedar and Steve when Miss Natasha began class with an announcement. Class, she said, I would like to introduce you to a new student. When I turned around, I just about fell off my chair because I did know him. He was the last kid on earth I wanted to see. Chapter 18. Disaster had been narrowly averted with the boy ogre. Thank the 87 moons, he was terrified of the mother human and willing to cooperate in my deception. Perhaps there was hope for him yet. Still, I awoke with disquiet. My whiskers trembled and I sensed a disturbance in the space-time continuum. I had felt it for, I had first felt it yesterday, but it was much stronger now. I tried to ignore it as I took the boys into the yard to begin acquainting them with the intermediate Nujitsu. When they napped in the grass, I, th I taught the calico more advanced moves. I was in the middle of demonstrating the flying razor slash on Flabby Tabby. He was useful as a tackling dummy. When my whiskers began to positively quiver, something was wrong. I, then I heard a loud buzzing. It was the intergalactic communicator. I pounced on it to, and looked to see who was calling. Miserable two-faced lackey. It was floofy fear. Finally! I answered the phone triumphantly. So at last you call, you pathetic excuse for a feline. Oh, hey, former High Lord Emperor. Luffy said, I'm uh, really glad I got through to you. I'm sure you're really busy there, like avoiding carnivorous ogres and all. 
Enough with this small talk, I said. I know why you have contacted me. You do? He said. Yes, I proclaimed. You have finally come to terms with your own ineptitude and have decided that you need me, the greatest warlord in the known universe, to come replace you as supreme leader. Uh, actually, I'm pretty good as supreme leader, he said. I mean, I could do without all the violent uprisings and stuff, and it is hard to... Silence, I cried. If you didn't contact me to bring me home, then why are you bothering me, you ignorant imbecile? Well, it's um, about the Council of Elders. You know how they are. Fluffy shook his head. And well, they've exiled another cat to Earth. What? I said. That's impossible. No one but I could ever be wicked enough to deserve the ultimate punishment. Hey, I told them. Elders, this is a total do-wrong. But the prisoner requested it. Fluffy shook his head again. I told the cat, Earth is really not the place you want to go. The prisoner requested it? What prisoner? Spit it out, you dim-witted dolt. Meanwhile, the calico was trying to get my attention pointing behind me, but I swatted her away. Tell me now, witless one, I demanded. Who is it? It is I, old friend, came a voice from behind me. I whirled around, and it was the last cat I wanted to see on Earth. Chapter 19. Cameron Adams! No! Chapter 20. General Fang, hiss, and here we can see the parallels, because now, um, now Raj's enemy, Cameron, is here, and then General Fang, who is Claude's enemy, is also here. Chapter 21, Cameron Adams, I couldn't believe it, why in the world was he here? How had my former best friend wound up in Oregon, in the exact same small town school as me? This had to be the biggest coincidence ever, and the worst one too. Cameron just moved here last week, Miss Natasha told the class, and his favorite hobby is building robots. I felt sick to my stomach. Now all the kids would find out that I exaggerated about helping with America Man. Cam, Cam would tell everyone that his mom had never taken my advice and that we were no longer best friends. And nobody would think that I was cool anymore. Then Cam would tell lies about me behind my back and that it would be it for me. And that would be it for me at Elwood Middle School. So let's show him what we've done so far, class. Miss Natasha gestured to our table. How about you guys go first? As Cedar, Steve, and I followed the rolling aquabot to the front of the room, Cam nodded hello to me, just like he used to when we saw each other every day. Like he wasn't even surprised. So, uh, the aquabot here is, uh, I couldn't think straight. I was so freaked out. Well, it's supposed to, like, um, if you're thirsty, well, the Aquabot is a state-of-the-art hydration delivery system, Cedar said, coming to my rescue. It's powered by lithium-ion batteries and a series of Arduino processors and human goodwill. She smiled brightly as she grabbed the controller from me and guided our robot to Steve. Are you thirsty? The Aquabot said as it lurched forward, lights blinking. Steve pressed the fizzy button and the aquabot extended one of its squirt gun arms. A narrow trickle of water dribbled out, splashing into the recycled plastic water bottle Steve was holding beneath it. Frustrated, Steve kept press pressing buttons, super fizzy, mega fizzy, but it wouldn't make the fart sounds. The hose from the CO2 canister was probably loose again. 
Nevertheless, Miss Natasha nodded encouragingly. It looks like you have some fine tuning to do, but that's a great start. Good job, you guys. And then she turned to Scorpion. How's your robot coming along? She asked. Newman Scorpion unveiled a hideous tangle of plastic parts and said, Meet the robot! Miss Natasha's ears went pink. Didn't we discuss this already? But this is totally different, Scorpion insisted. It's not a butt robot, it's the robot. And the robot's job is to help kids sit down on their butts. Check it out! With Scorpion at the controller, the drone lifted a few feet into the air. Its long pincer arm dragged along on the floor as it hummed forward. Then the arm struggled upward and pulled out a chair for Newt to sit in. At least, that's what it looked like. But Newt had hooked the leg of the chair with her foot, and I could tell she was really the one pulling it out. See? It works, Scorpion said. Newt and Scorpion both smiled big. Proud smiles. Miss Natasha was not impressed. Cameron, she said. This team needs your help desperately. Will you please join them? Sure, Cam said, shrugging. Miss Natasha told us to get to work, and then the thing I was dreading happened. Cam walked right up to me. Raj, he said, standing with his hands on his hips. I was wondering when I'd run into you. Chapter 22. I see your tail is mightily puffed. Bank said. Are you not happy to see your old friend? I hissed and spat into the grass. You are not my friend. You are a mongrel-eyed milk licker. His own tail twitched slyly. Ah, whiz cuz. Always so hasty with the insults. Have you still not learned that it is better to be quick with the claw than fast with the tongue? I growled at his insolence. I would show him a quick claw. So, uh, I guess I'll be hanging up now, came the sound of Fluffy Fear's voice from the communicator. You two must have a lot of catching up to do. Fluffy, you moron, I said, grabbing the phone. How could you have allowed this to happen? I will pluck all your whiskers out. I will use your tail to wipe my... Oh, hey, what did you say? The static is really bad all of a sudden. Fluffy waved his paw in front of the screen. You're breaking up. It's those last hundred thousand light years. Really tough on the signal. I wanted to yell at him again, but he had hung up. Oh, poor his cuz. Bang said, you should have known that you are not the only cat evil enough to merit the ultimate punishment. My blood began to boil like the cauldrons in which I cooked my enemies. Exile was my punishment, I thundered. Must you copy everything I do? Fang ignored my question, further infuriating me. This planet is a miserable place, miserable place indeed, he said as he took in the wall's training ground. I can see why our ancestors chose it. Is it true that the humans force you to play with stuffed animals for the, their amusement and steal your excrement with a small shovel? You must go back to litter box immediately. Sadly, I cannot, Fang said. The wormhole you see was opened only long enough to deposit me here. So how about we allow bygones to be bygones? He bared his teeth at me in a gesture of friendship. It was grotesque. Let us return to the days before our troubles began. Let us join together. Fang came close to me and spoke in a low hiss. For together we can rise up and conquer our oppressors. Together our evil warmongering will be eternal and unstoppable. A purr rose in my throat. Fang had come crawling back to me. 
just like I knew he always knew he would. <clears throat> At last, he realized that he was nothing without me. He would have to be punished for his transgressions, of course, but I could address that matter later. You have finally returned to your senses, Fang, I said. What joy it shall be to overthrow that simpering simpleton, Floofy Fear. Fang nodded. He must be vanquished. His whiskers clipped, his tail shaved, and his fur cast upon the wind, we shouted together. Just like old times, we purred. We were in complete agreement. Chapter 23. Oh, oh, hey, Cam, I stammered. What, what are you doing in Oregon? My dad got a job here, he said. Didn't you know? It was so Cam to expect people to know every detail of his life. So you do know the new kid. I was right, Max said, coming up to us. Who is he? Yeah, who is he, Brooklyn? Brody said. Brooklyn? Cam repeated. They call you Brooklyn? Uh, he's that friend of mine I was telling you about, I said to Max and Brody. <coughs> the words were painful. The one whose mom writes American Man. Whoa, you're the one? Max said to Cam. Dude, that's so cool. Students, Miss Natasha said. What have I told you about this being not being a social event? Thank goodness for Miss Natasha. But even though everyone went back to their tables, I couldn't concentrate on the Aquabot anymore. Cameron Adams was in my classroom. And I, and already, I could tell he was ruining everything. I could hear Scorpion and Newt being nice to him, and Cam talking about what a big deal his mom was, <coughs> and dropping all kinds of America Man references. Worst of all, Brody, Brody saying, Josh didn't even know Cameron was moving here. Some best friends they are. I looked back and saw Max nodding. I wanted to crawl under a table and die. As soon as the bell rang, <coughs> I, shrunk, I slunk out of class, ran home, and sat in my room all afternoon reading comics. Anything but America Man. When Mom came back after work, she called me to the, into the kitchen and asked how my day was. I told her it was the craziest day ever. Why is that, dear? Mom asked, with what smile, with that smile she saved for questions. She already knew the answer to, but she couldn't do, know this one. I dropped the bomb. Cameron Adams moved to Elba, I said. He's in my class. Can you believe it? My parents looked at each other, and then... Oh, sorry. My parents looked at each other, and then they started grinning. We knew, she said. We wanted it to be a surprise. What? Wait, how did you know? Because I hired his father to work in my lab, Mom said proudly. <coughs> Have you ever had the thought that you could actually feel the spinning of the earth? I could barely get out the words. So it's your fault that Cam is here? Fault? What do you mean fault? You've been talking about how much you miss your old Brooklyn pals since we moved. Cameron is your best friend. Didn't she know anything? As I went back to my room, I heard her say, What's the matter with him? Chapter 24 the kittens quietly observed me and Fang until the calico grew bored of our conversation and slunk away as if to nap. Then she turned, rose up behind her brothers on her hind legs, and crashed their skulls together. The gray boys whirled around and counterattacked, for once their fury matching that of their sadistic sister. Very impressive, Fang said. 
I must commend you on training such excellent young warriors. Though I landed here but seven nap times ago, it has provided me ample time to observe the pathetic state of cat kind on this planet. Flabby Tabby, who had been hiding underneath the bush, came out and laid on his back, exposing his fat belly to the sun. Appalling, Fang said. Then he turned to me and his eyes flashed with spite. It will indeed be satisfying to lead you and your young soldiers with a coup against foofy fear. What? I howled. I said it will be... I heard you, you traitorous flea bag, I roared. You will not lead me to anything. I am the supreme leader. Fang chuckled. Oh, whiz cuz, still overestimating yourself, he said. Your belly is nearly as round as the one who suns himself. My belly is taut and muscular as ever, I raged. And even if it were rounder, I would, it would only be on account of the mother ogre being such an excellent chef. Ha! Your teeth have grown yellow and your eyes are dull. You are no leader, Wizcuz. He gazed pointedly at my girth but you would make fine cannon fodder. You stringy son of a street cat, I yelled. You weak-brained claw biter. I crouched in preparation for Fang to pounce, but the general merely lifted a paw and licked it. Dear old Wizcuz, he said, how could you say such things about a cat you raised from a suckling kitten? He turned to my cadets. Did you know? Your master also trained me. And soon you shall learn the same lesson I did. Wizcuz is not the most evil warlord in the universe. I am. This was too much. I pounced, but the traitor performed the mega triple helix, a twisting backward leap, and landed deftly atop the fence. It's been lovely chatting with you all. Fang said, but I must be going. Ta-ta! I jumped up to the fence, which, it must be said, was higher than it looked. But Fang was gone. Yes! Run away, you coward! I cried, and turned back to the kitchen commandos. You see, this is how vermin slink away when faced with their superior. Their faces, however, I could see that the seeds of doubt had been sown. Chapter 25 After dinner, I went to find Claude. He was the only person, I mean, cat, or being, I could talk to. Not only that he was so great with sympathy, but he was always talking about his enemies, so maybe the arrival of mine would interest him. He was down in the basement crouched in the middle of a disaster area. There was shredded cardboard everywhere. Could that possibly have been once, uh, had once been a box? As well as the chewed up stump of the firm my dad had just bought. Claude did not look happy. So that made two of us. You would not believe what happened in school today, I said, sinking down into dad's Lazy boy. Claude didn't say anything. He just sit, stayed in his crouch. I told him about my former best friend moving to town and how it was going to wreck my life. Everyone in school already thought he was the coolest. And not only was I less cool, I'd lied about still being friends with Cam, just so I could seem cool, which made me the uncoolest. Claude still didn't say anything. Earth the Claude, I said. Are you listening? Earth, Claude spat. Home of carnivorous ogres, and now my own mortal enemy. What do you mean, I asked. The most traitorous cat in the known universe is here, on this vile planet of yours. My mouth fell open. No way, there's another space kitty? Claude growled. 
He is not a space kitty. He is my formal pupil and sworn enemy, a perfidious feline of arrogance, malevolence, and malice. And those are his good qualities. I didn't know what at least two of those words meant. But Claude, that's so weird. The same thing happened to me. Your former friend and enemy, my former friend and enemy, they both just landed in Elba. I failed to see the connection, Claude said. But don't you... Silence, Claude said. Enough of your tiresome dribble. I must speak to my troops. Then he sat up and looked around wildly. Where are my troops? Your troops? I said. You mean the kittens? Well, Claude only hissed and ran out of the room. Chapter 26. From the moment Fang left, I felt disquiet. He had turned tail and run. True. But not before exposing my kitten commandos to his lying propaganda. During the day's final battle exercises, I could swear that they were eyeing me suspiciously. He, would, he must not be allowed to sweep, sweep my troops out from under me. Not again. I ordered them to nap without rations and set myself to stew over the situation. To assuage, assuage my fury, I shredded a large cardboard box and dismembered the jagged plant the father human had decorated the bunker with. Didn't the fool know plants belonged outdoors? And then, to make matters worse, the boy human came downstairs whining over his petty problems. He droned on about how some other child human from his home city had arrived here. The poor ig ignoramus really had no idea how tiny his planet was. It was inevitable that these ogres would cross paths. <coughs> then he had the audacity to link his situation to mine. It was absurd. Did he have an army at stake? And that was when I noticed. The kittens, they were gone. Maybe Fang's word had infected them. Hiss. I raced into the combat room and scanned the piles of laundry. At first I didn't see them, but I could hear a small hushed voice, the voice of the calico. When our eyes met, she went silent. A look of guilt fell over the faces of the gray boys. The face of the she-cat on the other paw betray betrayed nothing but cunning. He was planning something. Something evil. I felt that mixture of pride and murderous rage that only a parent can feel. Alright guys, so that's where we're going to end off for today at the beginning of chapter 27. So, don't forget to like and subscribe before you click off this video so you don't miss the next, uh, next episode. Bye, guys!